Three years later, justice prevails, the third anniversary of the downing of Flight PS752. The downing of Flight PS752 represents yet another link in the chain of crimes that have victimized the Iranian people. 176 innocent lives were lost on the cold morning of January 8, 2020. In an unprecedented example of state crimes and aviation history, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards shot down Ukrainian Flight PS752 only three minutes after takeoff from the Tehran International Airport. Thus began a painful journey for the victims' surviving family members who deserve justice through a transparent, impartial trial. What happened? Why did it happen? Who are the real perpetrators of such a crime? What is our collective responsibility to help put an end to such inhumanity? Three years later, the families of the victims of Flight PS752 have no answers to these questions. The doomed destiny of Flight PS752 posed a serious challenge to the free world that must finally live up to its values. So far, the responsibility has fallen on the shoulders of hundreds of mourning family members who lost their loved ones to keep justice and human rights at the forefront of the fight against tyranny. Within hours of the downing of Flight PS752, the Iranian government set in motion a machinery of deceit, lies, and distortions. Their domestic propaganda machine and foreign apologists and operatives were mobilized to whitewash the crime. After three days of denial and only under international pressure, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards of Iran finally admitted to the downing of the passenger airplane, but they refused to comply with international law and regulations and insisted on human error as the cause of the downing without any transparency or cooperation to produce evidence. The families were helpless in compelling the Canadian, Ukrainian, British, Swedish and German governments who lost citizens and residents on the flight to hold the Islamic Republic accountable towards its obligations. Within five hours of the downing, the crash site was destroyed by bulldozers, but the international community remained silent. Not even a simple condemnation was tabled at the ICANN. The world faced an absurd situation where the very perpetrators of a crime were given the responsibility to investigate their own crime and produce a report on how their own military apparatus shot and downed a civilian airliner. Within months of the downing, the families took it upon themselves to form an association and with the help of hundreds of volunteers and tens of thousands of supporters and donors from around the world, they embarked on the long and arduous road to justice, a road without a roadmap. When the Iranian government published its final report that was no more than an attempt to whitewash their crime and shield the implicated high-ranking military and political officials, Dr. Agnes Kalamart, a UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary or Arbitrary Executions, put the spotlight on the tragedy. The reckless nature of the mistakes have led many, including myself, to question whether the downing of flight PS752 was intentional. Mr. Ralph Goodell, Canada's special advisor to the Prime Minister, published his responding report that highlighted numerous unanswered questions and emphasized the shortcomings and inadequacies of Iran's final report. Mr. Goodell remarked that Iran's final report was shambolic. By June 2021, the International Coordination and Response Group of five affected countries issued their notice of claim to the Iranian government. The association held a protest rally at the IKO headquarters in Montreal to voice their frustrations and emphasize IKO's role in their plight. The IKO officials made no effort to meet the rally participants. IKO's misguided reliance on neutrality only aggravates a situation where crimes are committed with blatant disregard for due process and transparency in good faith. Since the downing of Flight PS752, many agencies within the Canadian government acted swiftly and compassionately. The Prime Minister appointed a task force within hours of the downing and government officials were dispatched to help the families. 
financial assistance, special consular services, and other humanitarian measures helped the families cope with the shock of loss and grief. In August 2021, the association organized a truth rally in Toronto in anticipation of the upcoming federal elections in Canada. Thousands of supporters gathered around Toronto City Hall in solidarity with the victims' families. Soon after the federal elections, the five affected countries sent a reminder notice to the Iranian government on their notice of claim from months earlier. This too failed to get any reaction from the Iranian government that was overtly evading justice. The victims' families persevered in their relentless insistence on truth and justice. They organized an information booth at the Frankfurt Book Fair to engage the international community. They continued to meet with government officials and insisted on action. November 20th, 2021 marked a significant landmark in the history of the association. The open wound in the sky was nowhere near healing. The Iranian government unilaterally proceeded with domestic legal proceedings by orchestrating show trials of unknown, low-ranking personnel to further their agenda. The families and their legal representatives were denied access to the court files or any participation in the process. The association held a press conference on November 24, 2021 to unveil their 24-page fact-finding report. The report was the result of selfless collaboration between the association's fact-finding committee and military, aviation, legal, investigative and forensic experts who donated their time and expertise to the association. The association continued its insistence on the need for a proper investigation by an independent international body to address these shortcomings and reveal the truth. The association steadfastly continued its fight for justice. Numerous meetings were finally held with IKO council members. The association's fact-finding report was sent to all IKO members, but the organization refused to deliver them and returned hundreds of packages with no justifiable reason. In February 2022, a team from the Ukrainian prosecutor's office traveled to Canada to complete their investigations. Unfortunately, the trip was cut short due to the outbreak of an unprovoked war imposed by Russia. We reiterated our demands in the countless meetings with government officials. The RCMP rejected our repeated calls to open a domestic criminal investigation into the case. The association called on the Canadian government to list the IRGC as a terrorist organization and to impose targeted sanctions on Iran officials who commit atrocities. In the spring of 2022, bizarre news surfaced in the Canadian and Iranian media. It was announced that the Islamic Republic of Iran's national soccer team was to travel to Vancouver to play a friendly game with the Canadian national team. The association raised its objections to this plan from day one, believing that this game was a sports-washing scheme and an attempt to deceptively portray a normal image of the Iranian regime. After publishing an opt in the Globe and Mail, launching a public campaign to send letters to government officials and finally planning demonstrations in front of the stadium, Canada Soccer changed its decision and cancelled the match. We are happy that they corrected the bad decision that they made. On September 14, 2022, the association filed its submission to the International Criminal Court on the basis of allegations of war crimes and crimes against humanity after months of investigations and consultations with expert lawyers. The submission provided more than 90 pages of evidence and analysis against those who had a role in the downing of Flight PS752. To date, none of those affected countries have submitted a letter of support for this submission, and the court has yet to review and respond to the submission. In mid-September, 
after the brutal killing of Mahsa Amini by the infamous morality police in Tehran, a revolution erupted in Iran under the banner of Women, Life, Freedom. برای توی کوچه رخ سیدن برای ترسیدن به وقت بوسیدن برای خواهر The families of PS752 victims played an active role in mobilizing the community and echoing the voice of the protesters in Iran. By the 1st of October 2022, tens of thousands of people gathered in cities across Canada and the world to stand in solidarity with their courageous compatriots inside Iran in rejection of the Islamic Republic regime. By October 22nd, over 100,000 demonstrators assembled in Berlin. On October 29th, human chains were formed in cities around the world to commemorate the victims of oppression in Iran over the past 44 years. On November 19th, the association held a vigil on the third anniversary of the bloody November 2019 silent massacres that took the lives of over 1,500 peaceful protesters in Iran. The Iranian diaspora around the world united and compelled the global community to stand with the women and youth in Iran who are on the front lines of resistance despite the brutality facing them. Meanwhile, the regime continues to torment the families of flight PS752 victims by holding more show trials in secrecy. The families vehemently reject the legitimacy of such proceedings, but their protests continue to be ignored by the regime. Finally, on December 28 of 2022, only 11 days ago, there was a breakthrough. The four affected countries led by Canada issued a diplomatic note to the Islamic Republic state putting them on notice to commence proceedings according to the Montreal Convention, holding them criminally responsible for the intentional downing of Flight PS752. The case will be referred to the International Court of Justice in six months if arbitration proceedings fail. This is the beginning of the roadmap that victims' families have been seeking over the past three years. The only way forward is to reveal the truth, disclose all evidence, and hold the real perpetrators of this heinous crime accountable in a fair and impartial trial. Today, as we embark on the third anniversary of the downing of Flight PS752, we face the same questions. Who ordered missiles to be shot at Flight PS752? Why and by whom was the Iranian airspace kept open during a historic direct military confrontation with the United States? What happened during those early morning hours of January 8? Why has the Iranian government failed to live up to its international obligations? Who was responsible for dispatching lethal air defense units and with what motivation? Why is the international community courageous, if not silent in the face of such inhumane acts of violence? When will this cycle of violence be stopped? The families ask, how much longer will this painful wound over the skies of Tehran remain open?